So it's been a while since I've done a video update, but that doesn't mean to say I've been sitting on my arse, well, not mostly anyway. Um, I've been keeping busy doing kind of smaller projects, uh, restoring bits of furniture, uh, stripping a door, which we'll look at in a moment. But um, I'm about to start on a <laughs> slightly larger project, which is the second uh, vaulted cellar, uh, which is basically a carbon copy of the, the beer cellar that I finished uh, in the middle of last year. And this cellar is uh, maybe not in as good a condition as the as the other one so it's been quite wet the past couple of weeks you can see water is uh, coming through we need to maybe do something a bit with the drainage at the back but uh, perhaps when that's already pointed it'll be a little bit better uh, I didn't fully sandblast the walls here um, because well this is uh, leading out into the the stairwell and so directly below where we live and um, it's just it just make too much dust. So there's going to be a bit of uh, handwork to um, chop off all of that. Um, I think it's clay-based plaster. I'm not sure. Anyway, get that stuff off and uh, use a wire brush to clean the stones before repointing. Uh, today I'm going to get rid of this custom-built, <laughs> very fine shelving. Uh, so that has to come out. And uh, the floor is uh, still the original. Um, Big stone slabs, uh, quite uneven. Um, they look like um, they look like limestone, but uh, based on other cellars I've cleaned for other people, they look kind of grey. But once they're cleaned off, it turns out to be uh, turns out to be sandstone. So we'll see uh, once I get that stuff out. So yeah, just going to begin today and uh, see <laughs> if the muse takes me. Uh, just one curious point: um, our our friend had a uh, heat camera. Um, brought in and we were kind of going around the house looking at uh, the wall heating you could see the the heat of the the tubes in the in the walls and that type of thing and uh, we're pretty happy the house is well insulated and all that but one weakness is actually uh, these cellar ceilings so the kitchen is directly above here and uh, we put, uh, insulation below the floor heating in the kitchen uh, it's still coming through so we're slightly heating the roof of the uh, of the vaulted cellars uh, which means that uh, in the beer cellar, I used just basically limestone plaster and uh, just did a decent enough job there. But here we're going to try something else and uh, put on a really thick layer of insulating plaster, so five or six centimetres, and um, see what difference that makes to the temperature in here. The um, beer cellar is kind of staying at around 13 degrees at the moment when the door is closed. Um, which is a little bit warmer than I would have expected. Uh, I would expect it to go down to about 11 or maybe 10 at this time of year. But it's not bad. It's uh, it's okay. Uh, it's not like a sauna or something like that. So anyway, yeah, uh, I'm going to start this. But before I, I skip ahead to another video about uh, well progress, let's say, uh, just take a look at the door that I stripped. So this is a... It's hard to capture in this kind of frame, but uh, this is a door that we got from a house uh, in a nearby village. It was used as a cellar door and was uh, covered in layers and layers of paint. And it took me a couple of weeks to uh, remove that paint. Uh, it was kind of that green and uh, brown gloss at the bottom there. And uh, although it was used as a cellar, they're clearly not cellar doors. And uh, we think that they were church doors because of the insignia on it. So there's uh, like two crucifixes, a crown, which suggests like a bishop. There's a, uh, in the relief here, there's a sword handle here on the left. And then here's something like a bishop's crozier here, sticking out the back behind these ribbons and stuff. Uh, so we have no idea um, where exactly it came from, but we're going to try and find out. Um, and obviously it's, it's about one meter, 75, one meter, 80 high at the moment, but at some time in the past, they obviously chopped the end off. So the bottom is quite, uh, well, it's kind of moldy, but quite soft. It's been clearly weather damaged in the past. And um, my guess is uh, this kind of relief carving here, there's kind of a little uh, embossing circle here. And it's a fairly good bet that the distance here continued um, you know, in mirror form at the bottom. And then it would have been kind of a footplate. So we're guessing it was about 50 centimetres higher. So, you know, 2 metres 30 or something like that. Uh, which is a fairly large-ish door. Uh, one and a half uh, wide. Um, and you can also see where the, uh, the the later locks were put in. Kind of this height. Uh, kind of a comfortable height for the height of the door now. But previously the locks were 
were down here so that's more evidence i think that uh, it was higher also it seems from the hinges uh, or the marks in the back of the door that the hinges were placed the other way around i don't know and uh, it's kind of a reddish color now uh, i've oiled it um uh, but the first layer of whatever they had put on it was a kind of a i don't know it's kind of a resiny base when you're removing it with a, a sander or something it kind of melts and then hardens immediately uh but you can see here um there was obviously this kind of decoration on it at some stage uh you can see the outline of where it was uh before they put this kind of reddish uh finish on and i can't get rid of that what are we going to do with it i don't know now my original idea was to incorporate whoops <laughs> was to incorporate um those into a uh, kind of a larger door for the for the cellar so the we obviously need a, two new doors one for the beer cellar one for the one i just showed um my original idea was to have these as kind of panels in the middle and then um, build a framework of of new oak uh, to surround them and my wife being the archaeologist uh, doesn't find that a particularly good idea because she says they really should remain together uh, they're you know contextually they should be together and whatever um, we had offered them to a museum uh, not far away from here that has a collection of doors, but they had no room. Um, but maybe we'll ask the village, uh, the museum in the village uh, where we got it from. And uh, maybe they'd like to display it now that it looks nicer than it was. So anyway, that's that. I have a new idea for the cellar doors, so uh, I'll, I'll go into that uh, at another stage after I talk to a man about some wood and another man about uh, ways to paint them uh, in interesting ways. Anyway. That's the update for now. Uh, let's see how I get on with the cellar and how long that's going to take. I bet a lot longer than I think. So a little while later, uh, this is about as far as I've gotten taking the floor out. Uh, the shells came out easy and the floor is a bit more problematic. So compared to the um, other vaulted cellar where the slabs were sandstone and relatively thin, these are uh, limestone and uh, that one in the middle measures about uh, 1.2 by 1 meters and is about 12 centimeters thick <laughs> and there's no way in hell even these kind of ones that look kind of small I, I can't manage them out myself so I got everything else out that I could and the front part is actually just stamped clay um, so yeah that's as far as I got today and uh, I need some help either getting these out or I'm going to get a hilti and I'm going to smash them up the sandstone ones we've kept intact because we think we can use them um, in the garden or uh, maybe even relay them in, in here instead uh, but the limestone ones I'm not that interested in they're not particularly fancy dressed stone they're fairly rough and uh, they're just too big to handle actually so if they lie outside for a while they'll stay there they're not, we're not going to use them for anything they're too cumbersome so anyway, that's uh, as far as I'm willing to take it today and uh, I'll pick it up again over the week, see how far I get.